Well, hello and warm greetings from Brazil. Welcome to Gates Online Regional Seminar Series on Intersex Bodies Global South Alliances, Asia. It is an absolute pleasure to have you all with us today. My name is Vida Guzzo, and I am the chairperson for today's meeting. As an intersex travesty woman and intersex program officer at GATE, I am really honored to welcome you all here today. I am also really excited to hear your valuable input on the debate, and there will be time reserved for a questions and answers round. So please feel free to introduce yourselves and submit your questions and comments in the chat. I am also sincerely grateful for the exceptional opportunity to bring together here leaders one I admire immensely. So I want to thank them in advance for accepting this invitation. And I am really looking forward to a very insightful discussion. At GATE, we believe that alliances between intersex people in the Global South are crucial. Through, through political mobilization, we, we have found ways to survive and resist in a world that often mutilates us since our very birth. Over the past few years, we have gained more strength and momentum in our way of being and resisting. Heike Shu is an intersex human rights advocate working towards that social change. Heike founded OII Chinese in 2008, uh, the first organization advocating for the rights of Chinese-speaking intersex individuals. In 2013, Heike found, founded, the, founded Intersex Asia, which is the first and only regional network on intersex of intersex-led organizations in Asia. In 2008, Jeff made history in the Philippines by successfully petitioning for a correction of his birth certificate in the regional trial court, which actually allowed him to change his name and gender. He went on to co-found the, well, Intersex Philippines, which is the only intersex-led organization in the country aimed at creating a safe space for intersex individuals. Along with Heike Shu, Jeff currently serves as co-chair of Intersex Asia, where Isan Remy, Ishan Hemi is also a board member. Isan, an intersex activist from Nepal, co-founded the Campaign for Change, the first and only intersex-led organization in Nepal. He also published the first intersex storybook in Nepal and raised intersex issues and awareness at the UN level, condemning intersex infanticide and genital mutilation. In India, Duha, a molecular biologist and also a facilitator of Queer Campus Bangalore, is one of the co-founders of Intersex Human Rights India, a collective for intersex individuals across the Indian subcontinent. Duha's research focuses on integrating queer rights and STEM with a primary focus on bodily autonomy and also self-determination. In neighboring Bangladesh, MT Shihab has been working as an intersex rights activist for the past eight years. In December 2020, MD Shihab founded the Bangladesh Intersex Forum, BIF the first intersex-led organization in Bangladesh where they serve as an advisor. With the support of Intersex Asia and COC, BIF hosted the first historic meeting on intersex individuals in Dhaka. Well, as you can see, the Indosex secret has become our public issue. It has sparked a growing movement and we have been building complex networks of alliances to save our lives and to ensure our integrity. And articulating more alliances with intersex siblings is a step towards affirming our bodies and advancing intersex politics. In that spirit, I am pleased to present to you this series of online se seminars that GATE is hosting to discuss the trajectories of intersex-led movements in the Global South. Our aim is to carry out this consultation process 
from a territorial and regional perspective, as intersex groups in the Global South are less likely to receive funding, have access to community building initiatives, and to regional and global advocacy entry points. The Latin American and the Caribbean Conference was the first in a series of three regional conferences, one for each major region of the Global South. In the second iteration of Intersex Bodies Global South Alliances, we heard from activists of the African region. Today, GATE hosts the third regional conference. This time, we center intersex leaders from, Asia Pacific, from, from the Asia region to ask them the following questions. We, the intersex people from the Global South, who we are and what do we, do we want? Despite our challenges to survive and persist, it, bring, it brings me real joy to see the determination of the panel of speakers here today. And I would like to call Shamindra, Gates Director of Programs, to please join me in welcome our panelists today. Welcome, Shamindra. Good morning from Brazil. Thank you very much, Veda. Uh, thank you for inviting me to this space. Um, it's a great pleasure to be here. Uh, and uh, so my name is Chamindra Virawardhana, and I am a human rights defender from Sri Lanka. And currently I serve as uh, the Director of Programs and Global Partnerships at GATE. And um, I, uh, first of all, a big shout out to you, Veda, for the excellent work you do as the intersex human rights specialist at GATE. Uh, and um, so I come to this space, distinguished guests, as a queer woman and a trans woman from Sri Lanka and an intersectional feminist human rights activist. And most of all, as an ally to the global intersex human rights community, which means that I come here uh, in a spirit of, um, to quote a pacific proverb, putting myself, uh, putting my head at people's feet and of a learning, uh, in a spirit of learning and also in a spirit of unlearning. So um, if we think of uh, um, my own home region, South Asia, and the broader Southeast Asian region, uh, some very commendable work have, has been done on the intersex human rights front by some of our distinguished guests on the panel. At the same time, uh, we have a long road ahead in terms of consolidating intersex human rights and raising awareness uh, on, on intersex human rights issues in our countries. And in that spirit, I request your permission to say a few words uh, in my native language, in Sinhala, one of the languages of Sri Lanka, uh, to, um, uh, to as, as part of uh, my, my few words here. Antar Lingika Praja Aitin Piribandava. Dukerena, Mima, Sama Data, Peara di Tamuta, Nevagema, Metan Saba Gwena, Apesiluma, Siluma Mutanitama, Adrain, Piliganda, Kamati, Evagema, Antar Lingika, Aitin, Emanatang Intersex Human Rights, Piribandova, Ape Kalape, Dakunwasia Kalape, Evagema, the Samasta Asia Kalape, Me Aitivas Campilimatina, Aubo there. Alpai, a in sa Mevan Sangwada, Badipura, Apekalape, Sidui Utui, Kina Adahase Mama Tare Inua, eating me Astava Sabagino Basilo de Nadama, Vitama Adring, Piliganda, Kemeti. And a final word is that, you know, when we think of um, uh, the way forward uh, in terms of uh, inclusive human rights advocacy, especially from a from an intersectional feminist perspective, when we think about our collective liberation uh, as uh, rainbow communities, none of that can meaningfully take place without a central focus on intersex human rights. So. Um, this is why we need to advocate locally, regionally, internationally to, um, uh, to, to create more spaces for dialogue, for interaction, for knowledge sharing on, on intersex human rights issues, lived ex experiences of intersex people, of different age groups, and also 
to uh, build alliances between different bodies of rights, um, sex characteristics related rights, gender identity and expression related rights, sexual orientation related rights, and so on. And look at the intersectionalities where from um, the way, you know, uh, black feminist uh, leaders in the North American black feminist tradition who say uh, that um, I may have my lived reality, you may have your lived reality, but uh, we can work together for our collective liberation, you know, in that spirit, developing that kind of solidarity requires a genuine commitment to intersex human rights. And also for those of us, uh, people like me, who are not part of the intersex community, to stand in allyship, learn, unlearn, and um, ho hold space, try to create space where, you know, if we see a table where there is not enough space for intersex human rights, we either extend that table or we break that table, throw it away, and we create a new table with, right, with, with our intersex human rights family, with our intersex human rights defenders, experts sitting comfortably on that table. So it is in that spirit that I come to this space, and I extend a very warm welcome to the distinguished, fantastic, excellent human rights defenders who are our guest panelists today. Uh, thank you very much uh, on behalf of the programs team at GATE and on behalf of the Intersex Human Rights Specialist Program for uh, accepting uh, Vida's invitation to be here. Uh, it's a great honor to host you and um, I uh, wish all of you a lovely, fantastic event. And um, Vida, thank you for uh, giving me the space to share a few words and I pass it over to you, Vida. Thank you. Thank you, Shamin, for joining us today and for your true spirit of feminist leadership it's uh, and the lightship also thank you so much for welcoming our our panelists today dear hiker ishan jeff duha shihab thank you for being part of this important conversation i look forward to hearing your insights and perspectives and to kick off our discussions i would like to propose a guiding question for our conversation well this time around at this time i would like to to look into your past and present experiences in intersex activism, especially I would like to ask, uh, well, uh, beginning with Hiker, Hiker, what has your experience of intersex, uh, on intersex activism been like? And actually, how does your activism uh, relate to the global South, how it's different? from what has been done in the north in the global north so thank you so much again for being here today the floor is yours hiker oh thank you can you hear me yes yes okay thanks for uh giving me this opportunity to share our voices from asia yeah, uh, I'm an intersex activist from Taiwan, and uh, I just discovered Taiwan belongs to global south, a global north, you know, country. Yeah, but uh, I want to say that my journey uh, as an intersex activist is an uh, accident. I didn't expect to be an activist, but uh, it just uh, turned out to be. And my journey is that from uh, one person to a network in Asia. So it's uh, like uh, uh, already 15 years uh, short history. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> and uh, so uh, so I think the reality is that uh, for, for us, for intersex people in Asia, uh, it's the we no matter we are noble uh, global north or global south we also we face uh, so many common issues because most intersex people are totally alone without uh, understanding their own issue and or even they are intersex and not mention uh, not even mention and understand about the intersex human rights you know these are the uh, very common uh, phenomena like in uh, in Asia now so <clears throat> I started uh, you know I came out uh, in 2010 you know after I discovered I was a intersex person uh, when I was 42 years old and uh, so and uh, as you know it is not uh, a rare you know experience for intersex people 
Uh, many of us have no idea that we we are you know born in this way, and uh, many of us have faced uh, unconsented uh, and uh, unnecessary and harmful surgery, you know, to us, you know, since we are very little. Uh, this this kind of issue, uh, I think, it's uh, very uh, common in uh, worldwide, uh, especially like in the. In, so-called you know, global north uh, country in Asia, I guess, you know, like uh, example, like in Taiwan, in Japan, in South Korea, in Singapore and uh, uh, Hong Kong, you know, these, uh, these area in, in Asia are considered global north, uh, yeah, are considered no world. So they got more uh, um, medical resources so they got you know, so they get more uh, chances to be uh, to be fixed, you know, in the early age. You know, so I think probably this is the, uh, one of the big difference between global uh, north and the south in Asia and in in, uh, in uh, other country in Asia probably because you know some area not all, but I think there's a there's a big difference between uh, rural area and. Uh, and you know, uh, urban uh, city in the urban city, you uh, they have more uh, medical resources. Then they got more opportunity to get you know fixed. So that is a a, a issue that happened here. But in general, uh, the unconsented surgery is still happening in Asia, and this is something that we need to work on. But in terms of you know, uh, you know. Uh, uh, developing an a, the, the, uh, activism and NGO. And I think for glo global north and global south country in Asia, we face a sim similar issue because uh, probably before 2015, no funders uh, heard about intersex uh, human rights or intersex, even intersex before. So there was zero fund. There was zero fund, zero resources uh, for intersex uh, movement. Although in, intersex movement were, uh, has been exist uh, started in two, in nineteen nineties in in North America, and there are many underground uh, in movement uh, movement going on uh, in 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 the national level, but uh, no resources at all. And for us in Asia, we we face the same issue. Uh, most uh, most people have uh, never heard about this term intersex, <clears throat> but traditionally we do have this. We have we face discrimination. You know, uh, like people f uh, fear about people looks uh, differently, uh, or people uh, you know have you know like like not male, not female. This kind of idea as is discriminated by the society severely uh, when. Uh, when intersex baby was born and was exposed to the society, uh, it is a tragic, you know, disaster started because we will face uh, many negative uh, uh, confrontation in our life. We, for example, probably we will be seen as a bad karma, uh, you know, uh, for the from the past life, and our, we will face discrimination from the. If, uh, even from the family, so the, uh, we have you know infant side, say you know this, this kind of issue happen, and also uh, uh, discrimination from uh, from the neighborhood in the school, will get facing bully at school, and uh, so it it impact our uh, education uh, opportunity, you know, to to access to a proper education because we are so afraid to be bullied at school, yeah, and so. It impacts our all life because we we in this uh, in this circle then we would not get a, uh, get a good job uh, uh, opportunity and also some uh, intersex people we will face uh, uh, issue pretty similar to uh, trans trans issue uh, that we looks different from you know from the main main idea of gender binary appearance these are something that are very common yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, in terms of the, so we see that uh, it seems that global North countries should be more rich and should be more capable to deal with our issue, but not in Asia. Uh, still now that in, um, in, in the uh, global North country in Asia, uh, 
we, you know, these country are generally will not receive any fund from funder because they were considered as global nodes. And also these country uh, have still have strong, you know, um, a gender binary norm. For example, like Japan and uh, South Korea, uh, Taiwan, you know, Hong Kong, Singapore, these are all, you know, culture from, you know, French, Asian, China, you know, we we share very conservative uh, Confucius, uh, Confucianism. So uh, the, the gender binary realm is strict and, and clear. Yeah, only in Taiwan is more uh, open So because we have same-sex marriage uh, uh, rights already passed. Um, but for other countries, even in global North country, it's very difficult uh, for them. Uh, so for this, this global North country, uh, intersex people or want to be a, be a community is also very difficult because they were considered a rich country, they were, in, they were not considered as, you know, should we get uh, <laughs> the support? So in the Six Asia, my organization is a network organization in Asia. We we see the gap, and so we, we are now trying to, you know, support, uh, to fill the gap, to support the building the community in this, you know, in global north uh, country. Certainly be, be, besides that, we, uh, we, we certainly will focus on global South country because global South country, for example, like uh, the country uh, leaders that presented today, uh, Nepal, uh, Philippines, India, uh, Bangladesh, you know, these country, uh, uh, they are, their economic uh, economic conditions are not that good. So this is certainly that we will, and we 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 will support in the you know. Uh, uh, help them to get resources because it's not possible that for them to get any resources from their their country inside their country it's not not possible so this is what uh you know in asia that i think for us in asia our activism here global north country in the global south country uh, has to work together because we actually we don't we are the same that uh, we don't have uh, resources, you know, uh, that uh, uh, that can help us. But not, but the after Intersex Asia uh, network um, established, uh, I think it's very helpful for us, you know, to support to the build Intersex community in Asia, uh, and also solidarity. Uh, really bring strength, you know, you know, to, to get the people together. And we will, we also have more capacity to raise some for uh for our community here and you know to build we expect to build uh, our uh intersex movement in Asia uh, uh by you know incubating intersex uh, activists and uh, help them uh to grow and and also in and to reach out to more intersex people in in their country so we can uh build more in the six led organization around every Asia country, then we can work together uh, to have our voices, you know, uh, to be speak and uh, we can uh, really create an intersex movement in Asia. Yeah, um, so I, yeah, I, I'm really honored to, you know, uh, experience this uh, journey from one person that came out in 2010, um, only myself, yeah. And in Taiwan, um, I have to say, because we are a small uh, island with small population, uh, still we don't really have a lot of indigenous people who are willing to come out. Probably it is also because uh, global North country, uh, people has, uh, you know, has better economical, uh, condition to survive, so they, they choose to hide. I think it's quite uh, similar to the to the global North country in Asia. So for now, I see the difference is that there are more intersex people in uh, global South country in Asia are willing to come out and to, you know, to be visible. And this is very important because we need to care the world and especially the Asia society to know that intersex people really exist and we are 
uh, we are human beings as everybody else, and we are demanding our human rights. So uh, I have to say that uh, uh, I, I am the initiator of the you know, movement in Asia, uh, in, in Asia, Asia region. But I think uh, the great contribution for our movement actually are from our um, uh, you know, intersex-led organization in uh, uh, from the south, uh, from the uh, global south uh, country, for example, like Nepal and the Philippines, now they have developed into a much bigger organization because their leader, you know, uh, came out, you know, and raised awareness, and uh, also like Bangladesh, you know, uh, in, in India, you know, these uh, country, global south country. Uh, they have more more intersex people gather together, yeah, and, and uh, become the member of intersex led organization. I think this is a very uh, so we are we are helping each other, you know. Uh, like uh, intersex Asia is based in uh, Taiwan, and uh, so we we hope that we can uh, uh, do, you know raise uh, resources to support you know uh, from from the you know, global north country and to you know support a uh, global south country in asia yeah this is uh, i think at you know um, resources is quite challenges you know, for us and because without resource it's very really hard to uh, for industry activists to you know <clears throat> only uh, Count on themselves to to do the advocacy in Asia because Asia is very big and uh, in the six and uh, visibility and awareness are still very very uh, uh, you know um, under you know estimated people uh, most people has no idea uh, especially uh, most government actually have. I never really care about uh, our rights, uh, except uh, India and Taiwan and uh, Philippines probably, you know, go next then. And in Nepal, you know, Eastern East um, working on it very hard. Yeah, so in, in the political level, uh, we still need to do a lot of job you know, to do the advocacy in the you know uh, in the regional level to move to help the uh, government here uh, to to value and to see and value uh, our human rights uh, here. Yeah. Thank you so much, Hiker. Uh, well, I as you are saying, I I know that it, uh, Nepal has the interest of the campaign for change has a long lasting collaboration with uh, Intersex Asia. I am, I was wondering if you Ishan, could uh, share some thoughts around these context and these challenges to well on, on your activism in Nepal and also these funding challenges, Hiker just uh, called attention, but I was really interested on your work in, with the UN advocacy. This is, well, regional and global advocacy entry points are very scarce and rare for us intersex persons. So I would like to to, to ask to well to to ask you details about your work on that and how how well. Please go ahead, Ishan. Uh, the floor is yours. I am looking forward to hear from you. Uh, thank you, Mira and Kate, uh, for providing this opportunity to share our uh, like journey as an intersex activist in um, global South country, who has very less resources and yeah especially for the intersex um, populations. Uh, yeah, I. Um, started uh, my uh, activism in 2011 and since then I have been working on intersex human rights issues because before that I faced a lot of um, challenges as an intersex person because I belong very remote area still there is no idea about the sex gender sexuality right there is still um, the society is very discriminatory on the caste system and uh, yeah, and different things, right? Uh, so um, I uh, 
like lived my birthplace uh, in 2000, around 2009 and 2010, uh, I decided to uh, like come out and 2011, I uh, openly, like I, I, I came out uh, as an intersex person and I talk about the, um, my personal experiences as an intersex person. In the initial phase of my activism, uh, I was looking to understand my own idea, identity because uh, in my remote area, like uh, my birthplace, I didn't get any information because society treated me as a differently, but I didn't have any idea why they are treated me as a differently. And I left my birthplace and then uh, I started to talk about my personal experiences. And I feel that LGBT organization could help me in uh, this and also provide me with a space to create more awareness right, about intersex rights. Because before that, I didn't know about the term intersex. And I engaged with the LGBT organization and I knew about the intersex term. And then I felt that they helped me to create the safe space to uh, talk about the intersex issues. Uh, therefore, I began uh, contributing to uh, to the work uh, of the LGBT organization by sharing my personal experiences. Because at that time, I didn't know other intersex individual. I didn't know about the issues of intersex population. And uh, yeah, uh, because that idea was sharing my experiences as an intersex person uh, with the hope of uh, like uh, uh, meeting to uh, like more intersex individual. And, um, and very soon I realized uh, that uh, the tokenistic approach of LGBT uh, organization was uh, doing more harm than the good because um, in Nepal, LGBT movement started uh, in 2000, uh, like uh, 2000, 2001, and they uh, concisely uh, adding I in their acronym since the beginning. Uh, the approach resulted in the assumption that the grant made to an LGBTI organization would be utilized for the benefit of all the identity groups. But the reality is very far from uh, from the assumption, right? Um, in reality, none of the organi like organization uh, that got uh, uh, like such a grant to take any sufficient step uh, to ensure the uh, like intersex issues and to talk about the intersex um, uh, issues. Uh, so. And also I didn't uh, receive any support from the LGBT organization to, to build the intersex community, right? And uh, like to uh, raise the uh, awareness and increasing the capacity of intersex individual. When I started my, uh, like uh, sh share the, my experiences, personal uh, experiences and other intersex individual uh, like uh, got to connect with me. And, um, and in uh, 2016, we um, uh, like, uh, before, before 2016, we were very few uh, because I just started my experiences and other intersex individual, they didn't come out in the society because of the, uh, uh, like, uh, they have a fear of stigma and the discrimination, right? Still in Nepal, uh, we, we think that uh, Nepal is quite progressive country on LGBTI, but um, the intersex understanding of intersex is very limited. Uh, so that's why um, before 2015, uh, many intersex individual uh, like uh, they didn't uh, came out. And uh, in 2006, uh, 2015, I uh, like got chance to uh, participate in the ILGA um, uh, Asia conference in Taiwan. And at that time, we had the first uh, like gathering of intersex individual in Taiwan from the Asia. And we had a meeting with Astria Foundation and LGBT, uh, like uh, UNDP uh, uh, regional office, Bangkok office. And the discussion was about how we move forward our issues in the Asian region. And I thought that uh, when I came back from the uh, Taiwan and I can uh, like uh, 
um, I'll try to uh, like uh, gather the interest individual because before that there was no any uh, like specific activities on intersex issues. And uh, we organized the first uh, like gathering of intersex people in Kathmandu, uh, like inviting them from different part of Nepal. And we met uh, like uh, uh, 13 intersex uh, individual first time. And we share our uh, experiences as an, as an intersex individual. And uh, yeah, the, the, uh, uh, like uh, intersex, uh, like uh, our experiences was so diverse because we belong to uh, uh, different culture, culture uh, religion, uh, geographical situation, but we are the intersex individual, right? Because we didn't have any um, uh, like um, uh, any platform to meet other intersex individual uh, and share our experiences. And uh, we like when we met first time, we were so happy because to meet other intersex individual, uh, because some of the intersex individual were, were uh, part of the uh, LGBT organization, even though they didn't have the safe space to talk about their issues. Because uh, at that time, the LGBT movement more focused on LG, like HIV uh, related uh, issues. And also, you know, in a, when we uh, like um, uh, organize the first uh, meeting and most of the intersex individual, they share that all the intersex people are not uh, comfortable uh, being associated with LGBT because some of the intersex individual, uh, they identify themselves uh, cisgender and heterosexual, even they have the uh, like uh, lived experiences as an intersex individual, right? But they are not comfortable uh, comfortable being associated with the term LGBT. That's why they uh, like uh, this year, if we have a, our own platform, we can uh, get together and share our experiences to each other because it can be a safe issue for the intersex individual. And they also wanted, uh, wanted to have a distinct uh, like uh, identity uh, of their own because uh, um, in Nepal, when uh, you uh, like uh, sh uh, sh hear the term LGBTI, the assumption is that those people are the third gender or transgender. That is the conception, and and that's why we 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 formed the uh, like uh, as a loose network in two thousand sixteen. And during that uh, meeting, we also collected the uh, lived experiences from the intersex individual, uh, 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 like getting the consent from them to publish the book. And because uh, we realized we didn't have any resources to know about ourselves, right? Uh, that's why it's, uh, we realized if we have the book, it would be uh, very helpful to, uh, like, to, to educate the, uh, not only with the intersex individual, but also the people who, uh, who are in the society, like uh, social media, like I, I mean, civil society organization and human rights defender, because uh, uh, the, the idea of intersex is uh, only who have ambiguous genitalia, but we have a diverse identity, right, under the umbrella term. And uh, we collected the, their uh, lived experiences and published the uh, story book. And after that, we also uh, like, um, we, we also um, uh, like uh, submitted our shadow report to the uh, UN because at that time when we uh, had the meeting in uh, Taiwan, uh, like intersex free conference, there was the entry from the uh, ILGAO. They, uh, they, they had like, they uh, gave a session on UN, how can we use the UN mechanism to raise our issues in the international platform, right? At that time, I didn't have much idea about it, but I came to Nepal from the Taiwan and I talk about the uh, about my uh, supervisor and he was ready to uh, support me on technical because my English is not is still is not good. And that's why I need the support to uh, like write the uh, report and I collected the information. At that time, we uh, submitted two pages report uh, because I didn't know the issues of intersex sign. That's why I uh, um, like put my story in that um, uh, shadow report when I was uh, like 26 or 27 years old. And 
Fortunately, uh, a CRC committee uh, like reviewed our report and they made the uh, five specific intersects, uh, like a concluding observation on intersects issues to the Nepal government. And after that, our uh, like issues become kind of uh, like um, public because they um, like other many civil society organizations uh, recognized our uh, effort. And yeah, we, we participated, like we, we started to uh, like raise our issues in the UN level, even though we didn't have the resources to participate, to uh, go to the Geneva and the, made the oral, to, to make the oral statement, right? We submitted our report and we connected, we, we contacted with the Daniel Turfer from the uh, East of IGM and they uh, did the lobby and uh, advocacy in the UN level. They also made the oral statement in UN level because we didn't have the resources and the organization where I, where I worked at that time, they also uh, didn't ready to provide me uh, to the, uh, like uh, to go to the uh, UN. Yeah, we, we started our uh, like, uh, started to raise our issues in UN level and in 2018 we also uh, um, like made the uh, shadow report uh, to the SIDA committee. SIDA committee also made the concluding observation to Nepal government uh, but uh, since then we are doing lobby and advocacy to implement those uh, concluding observations and raising the awareness doing the sensitization program with different uh, like partner like the doctors, uh, civil society organization, government, still uh, they don't have the idea to implement those uh, concluding uh, observation because the idea is that uh, uh, there is the some mainstream LGBT organization. They always co up the work done by the small organization, right? And that is the challenge is to break it. Um, so yeah, uh, many intersects like, um, and um, um, before 2000, uh, yeah, we, we registered it in 2017 as an organization because after uh, our uh, like uh, 2016, we went different organization to raise our issues. Though, those organizations like government party or the civil society organization, oh, where are you from? What's your organization name? That's why it's very important to have the legal uh, identity, right? Uh, so we registered as an, um, uh, an NPU, and after that, we more focus on intersex issues uh, because we started our movement in 2016. And uh, yeah, it's been already uh, six years in 2000, like uh, in, um, in, in May 11, we will celebrate our sixth uh, anniversary. Um, yeah, um, many intersex individuals, uh, not in, uh, not only in Nepal, but also in Asia, face the range of uh, human rights violations. The most serious uh, violations is that to uh, bodily integrity, which is violated uh, as a result of non-consensual unnecessary surgery, right? So uh, this intervention is still uh, happening in different hospital in Nepal. We also raise this issue, uh, uh, share that data from the medical journal to the UN committee in 2016 and 2018. And also um, in, we, we are in the global south, right? We, we don't have only the medical issues because in the global north, uh, the global north country and movement of intersex uh, population, intersex movement more focused on uh, non-consensual unnecessary medical uh, intervention. But in global south, we also have the social issues, legal issues, and also the cultural issues as well. So many intersex uh, individuals- Ethan, Sorry to interrupt you. You, you have <laughs> shared lo uh, very important issues. And I was actually, well, expecting to know from Jeff uh, if, if he experienced similar issues around, well, especially, well, I know you have been advocating on courts, uh, well, uh, and trying to, to, to push uh, national institutions towards uh, intersectional rights protection. 
And I was wondering if you could share uh, a few thoughts around it. And also Ishan have shared about, about the importance of in-person meetings and how it has uh, and training opportunities to to counter uh, to counter to counter the the lack of resources. So I was wondering if you, Jeff, could share uh, some thoughts about the Filipino context and the key takeaways from intersex activism in your context also. Thank you, Bida. Thank you. Yeah, I think uh, I'll start by sharing a little bit about my my life story. Yeah, so the participants can better understand the Philippine context. I was assigned female at birth as Jennifer Kagandahan, but for as long as I can remember, I always felt disassociated from my assigned sex at birth. You see, I was born with ambiguous genitalia, so I knew I was not like the other girls. I grew up with. I saw how different my body while playing, as kids do so in various places in the Philippines. Uh, no one really knew about my condition. So no one at that particular time was able to articulate to me what I was going through. But everyone gossiped about me. Neighbors who heard of my physical appearance taunted me, calling me as the person who had two genitals. I was also forced to wear uniform, assigned for women. And since my family is a, is a devout Roman Catholic, I was forced to attend Sunday masses wearing women's clothes, complete with veil, a symbol of feminine purity in the eyes of God and the society. I repeatedly asked my parents about the differences of my condition, but they couldn't provide me a, any answer. So when I was about to enter my fourth year in high school, I had myself tested by an endocrinologist from Metro Manila. After an ultrasound, I was found that I had an infantile uterus. I remember being told by the endocrinologist that it is easier to dig a hole than to be the pole. That's something I could never forget. But since I didn't agree to be operated on, they couldn't do a thing. The hardship continued for me. However, for instance, after finishing Bachelor in Physical Education at Polytechnic University of the Philippines, I had, I had difficulty in getting job because my physical appearance didn't match the name given to me at birth and the sex marker in my legal documents. At that point, I asked a relative who happens to be a lawyer on the steps I could take to remedy my situation. And so on December 11, 2003, I filed a petition at the Regional Trial Court to allow me to change the name and sex marker given to me at birth. I underwent rigorous physical and psychological tests, including chromosomal analysis and other laboratory tests. All the results were submitted to the court. It was under bracking at first because it is the first uh, case filed in the Philippines at that time. Uh, the regional trial court released its decision Siding me on January 12, 2005, a day before birth, my birthday. But the amenable decision did not last long, with the Office of the Solicitor General immediately seeking a reversal of that decision. The case therefore landed at the Supreme Court of the Philippines. On September 12, 2008, the highest court of the Philippines released a decision siding with my petition. Uh, in its decision, the Supreme Court of the Philippines stated that Ultimately, we are the view, we are of the view that where the person is biologically or naturally intersex, the determining factor in his gender classification will be that individual thinks of his her sex. The court will not dictate on respondents concerning a matter so innately private as one's sexuality and lifestyle preferences, much less on whether or not to undergo medical treatment to reverse the male tendency due to CAH or congenital adrenal plasia. Respondent is the one who has to live with his intersex anatomy. To him belongs the human rights to pursuit of happiness and of health. Thus, him should be belong a uh, primary choice of what courses of action to take along the path of his sexual development and maturation. I was happy then, 
I feel free finally. Even if the narrative that made the news still mock my condition with headlines bannering that a woman with two genitals was backed by the Supreme Court to change gender. My story may have taken a somewhat favorable route, but this story is not shared by many other people in the Philippines, intersex people in the Philippines. Because here, what's more noticeable are issues flocking the intersex community here. And to capacitate the members of in the intersex community to respond to issuing affecting intersex Filipinos, Intersex Philippines was born in 2016 as an online support group and then as a formal organization in 20, uh, 2017. This also stressed that the best responders to deal with intersex related issues would be intersex people themselves. And so capacitating, capacitating them would be the ideal. Because understand, uh, understandably, the intersex community still has a lot of issues to deal with. To start, even if the decision of the Supreme Court of the Philippines will now allow intersex people to change their names and sex marker in legal documents, this continues to be a difficult process. Those who wish to do this still has to get medical and psychological tests, which many in limited resources setting like the Philippines are unable to afford. Hiring legal practitioners to file cases like this, similarly costly and again, not within the reach of, co of common Filipinos. This therefore continues to be a pipe dream for many intersex Filipinos. Seeking medical care for intersex people is also challenging in the Philippines, mainly because None is specialized on intersex people's medical concern. And those who may be able to render services related to intersex conditions may not be accessible at all. The lack of care and support services for intersex people can be life-threatening. And yet this lack has long been normalized. And there, the continual lacking of education on intersex variation. And so here in the Philippines, there remains numerous misconceptions of being intersex. For example, there's belief that intersex people using unquared term hermaphrodite, initiating that intersex people have genitals of both sexes, that there, that there are over 40 uh, intersex variations of intersex condition, but uh, with true hermaphroditism uh, or some, someone with ovarian or testicular tissues is only one of them. Uh, so it is hardly recognized, largely because this is not properly discussed, and this include uh, and this including in many medical facility facilities, so that medical practitioners continue to be unfamiliar with intersex concern. I have heard of intersex Filipinos who are treated as a specimen in hospitals, seen as subjects to be studied. This humanization stems from lack of knowledge of awareness, which stems from the lack of education on intersex variations. There too is this misconception that being intersex is very rare. And uh, with even doctors saying this, according to data though, 1.7% of the general population are born with intersex traits. In the Philippines, this total an estimated of around 1.7 million people who are bored with intersex trade. And yet people still don't hear about intersex community, largely because of discrimination that forces us to hide. There is also belief that intersex is a condition that needs to be corrected. Not surprisingly, many intersex children are forced to undergo surgery as an attempt to normalize them. But these surgeries are performed on people still too young to make informed decision on their own bodies. Similarly, surgery is often done only to amend the bodily aesthetically to fit the normal prescription of male and female bodies. In most cases, these surgeries are not needed. Intersex people should be given agencies over their own bodies. And with regards to activism, uh, only the most passionate people take the lead and act because it's purely voluntarism, 
majority of our member have pin, a financial difficulty. How can we expect them to fight for our human rights and as intersex person when the basic right of eating at least three times a day, a day haven't met? So Intersex Philippines and Intersex Asia is finding ways to help our member through our social economic empowerment program. National grassroots movements lack funding. Some funding uh, funders are focused on regional organization or big organization. But how about us, the emerging organization? We cannot do something big if we don't have any funding. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jeff. Uh, well, uh, I was thinking about the the case of India uh, and Duha, please, if you could, well, you are co-founder of the Intersex Human Rights India, right? And I am well, wondering the challenge uh, to fight for intersex rights in the second largest population in the world. Uh, but I, I would like to include another aspect of that. Uh, besides the challenges, what approach uh, you envision or you think that can be taken to address also the, the challenges you have faced in India? So please, um, the floor is yours. Thank you so much for joining us. Hello. Hi. I'm so happy to see such happy faces. <laughs> It, it uh, boosts my morale and uh, yeah, I, it gets me excited to talk about things as well. Thank you, Gate. Thank you, Hiker, for recommending me here and giving this opportunity. It's, it's really nice to get uh, voices highlighted out there. Uh, also because our lived experiences matter a lot. Uh, just before I get to the main question, I just want to say that uh, the journey that we all go through, be it in the global north, be it in the global south, may differ in several ways, but uh, you know we are all united in the commitment and uh, for advancing the cause of intersex rights and advocating for more than just uh, you know visibility, it's more about uh, making this world a more uh, equitable and accessible place to live around. So I think this is like a binding factor that I can say I might end up speaking a lot of biological terms, I'm a molecular biologist at the end of the day. But, uh, but yes, uh, something that, you know, brings us together, binds us together is a catalyst for our movements is the fact that we, that this commitment and unification that we, uh, you know, show within our movements. Now to start off with India specifically, uh, there are some challenges that we face, uh, mostly, to be, uh, mostly to begin with the legal awareness or the word intersex itself. Uh, our local, uh, a lot of our local uh, regional languages do not have the correct vocabulary to define us, to talk about us, and uh, to uh, you know distinct, uh, distinguish these identities away from trans identities. Usually here in India, they're clubbed under the trans identity and considered as transgender issues as well. So I think that's the biggest problem that we face when talking about intersex issues is that there is a lot of power invested uh, and you know visibility invested on the trans umbrella but when you talk about trans umbrella where are the intersex people you know they're, they're clubbed they're you know sort of under a mattress stuck behind and not considered at all so i think uh, the way that i with ihr i have started to sort of combat this and taking inspiration from other intersex uh, indian activists for example gopi shankar uh, is to make sure that, you know, intersex, the word intersex or the, you know, the existence is very much out there. Like when we talk about trans issues, let's start talking about intersex issues as well. They are not really distinct from each other. Our, you know, uh, health and accessible needs do fall on the line of, you know, being, uh, let's say, sibling uh, to each other, not twins really, because not all of our issues are the same thing but really like siblings in the movement. So when we talk about uh, uh, trans health, trans uh, access to something, let's talk about intersex access, intersex health as well, because a lot of uh, trans policies directly impact intersex people as well. So anything that is anti-trans is anti-intersex and vice versa. So <clears throat> and knowing that there might be very less awareness and understanding about intersex uh, variations in India, 
and human rights and what you know impact the people of uh, india in terms of uh, intersex individual it makes it you know a little more challenging for us and it's like an extra add on challenge to how do you like combat this uh, at aishara what we have started doing is uh, we have started hosting workshops now these workshops are not those that you you know go back and talk and then uh, there is no like coming back from it like a lot of these workshops do not have a feedback mechanism wherein what happens next yeah so like uh, we ensure that our workshops are not just one part of it it's a series of workshops so maybe today we talk about access to healthcare and reproductive rights tomorrow we talk about how do ngo sectors can make a difference to intersex right how do mental health people make an impact to the intersex movement etc so by making that a cd or a you know a feedback loop we are also enabling other stakeholders within the community to come and attend these workshops uh, you know uh, take lessons from these workshop and tell their stakeholders about these workshop so what we realized that it kind of created like a wave uh, for us uh, starting this january uh, 2023 so that when we started doing these uh, series of workshops we realized that uh, okay the number of participants attending these workshops have started increasing only because they have heard about this workshop from somebody else who attended the previous workshop and it really uh, kind of did you know give us a lot of moral uh, boost and and satisfaction of understanding that yes the work we are doing is impacting with people it's resonating with people and the movement so earlier we were uh, sticking up only with uh, the queer movement now we have ac- academicians sticking up to us and asking us to come and talk about the intersex visibility we have a uh, platform like uh, you know artificial intelligence people people in the software industry asking us to come and you know talk about intersex identities and so on and so forth now the drawback of all of this is the legal and social attitude that we are facing so legally speaking intersex people are not recognized in india as intersex as an individual identity they are as i said clubbed under the trans umbrella now what that uh, sort of does is that uh, and create the social stigma around us right so people view as uh, as uh, uh, sorry as jeff mentioned like you know born with both or people having possessing both both of gen- genitalia and using uh, offensive uh, slurs and terminologies like hermaphrodite to describe us in medical textbooks is very common occur in the near in india that uh, they do not use the correct terminology to talk about intersex people uh, interestingly uh, as a student of genetics i have seen that uh, they use the word intersex to describe fruit flies so there is a, a genetic variation in fruit flies that is called intersex but they will not use this terminology to you know talk about human beings or vice versa so uh, even for animal the word intersex is mentioned but for human beings no no they will use offensive terminology pathologize on our identities and profit from it uh, another social factor or barrier that we uh, face here in india is uh, discrimination within the queer community let's not talk about let's completely not forget that the queer community itself perpetuates so much stigma on intersex people making them an invisible identity so you have a lot of power vested within the lbt movements unfortunately oh, sorry uh, lg yeah lgb movement sorry more likely not much of t but the lgb plus movements really so the a lot of concentration of power uh, capital and uh, visibility uh, visibility goes to these movements and when you bring out uh, talking about trans lives or intersex lives they are tucked away because you know well they do not uh, you know how do i say uh, matter to the majority of them this goes up to even showing up for uh, events like transgender day or visibility or remembrance we have a, a we have a day here in india uh in my city uh, on 21st november it's called the trans day uh, of remembrance uh, and it's a part of the pride uh, pride collective that we uh, host in our city uh and we see that uh, the number of people turning up for uh, let's say a gay party might be 1000 to 2000 people but the number of people who turn up for a transgender day of remembrance might be 20 so the number you know really speak for itself like the the highlight that you know there is so much higher level of intersecting discrimination that is faced by intersex and trans individuals and this makes it more challenging to talk about intersex identities because people are not willing to learn now 
Now they say that, oh, this is a trans issue, let's keep it there. We have rules or regulations or laws already protecting you. So why do we need to talk about you? So what are you special that do, do we need to talk about your issues as well? And I think uh, a lot of this dilutes down to the fact that how uh, selective are we with our anger and our issues? You know, how, how are we uh, biasing our thoughts and views on issues? So I think within the larger LGBTQIM plus movements, also it is about that selective biasness. Is it benefiting me? If, okay, it is benefiting me. If it is bene it's not benefiting me, okay, I'm not going to show up for this something. So I think that attitude needs to go away that there is no liberation for all of us without the liberation for, sorry, there is no liberation for queer people unless there is liberation for all of us. So if there is no intersex liberation, there is no liberation for queer people. Unfortunately, that should be the reality that should, you know, stick in uh, for everyone. Yeah, thank you. All of us. Thank you so much, Duhan, for this critical information you shared. You have stressed uh, how stigma and discrimination uh, affect us and also um, the, the issues around language and terminology. And I would like to ask um, to Shihab uh, on about the Bangladesh context, because I know from my research that there has been a conflation between hijra and intersex, although there is the research shows that intersex people are rarely part of hijra. Uh, well, I would like to, to ask you about the intersex community in Bangladesh, this kind of technology and language issues, and uh, and ask you about how how this affects uh, the 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 possibility to achieve specific policies for intersex people in Bangladesh. Yes. So you have, uh, thank well, you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, Intersex Asia give me the opportunity. Uh, always, uh, Intersex Asia give me the opportunity. Uh, the opinion of the Bangladesh, uh, Bangladeshi intersex people, uh, because uh, because uh, uh, when people uh, think that um, Bangladesh is the uh, Western, lot of Western people think that Bangladesh is the part of the uh, Western people think that uh, Bangladesh is the part of the India. So. Uh, so uh, when uh, they ask, uh, when they ask, and when they try to solve our problem, they collaboration with India, but it's very problematic because our language, our geographical perspective, our problem is much better, far different from the India. So, so, and thank you so much, uh, Intersex Asia, give me the opportunity from their uh, uh, from their uh, own opin opinion so uh, i want to say um, when i was born my father uh, and mother and also my uh, doctor did not understand if i am a boy or girl discrimination that's towards and very beginning i am finding um, uh, myself uh, who am i so there are lots of uh, there are lots of uh, um, tag behind me. For example, uh, someone, uh, some people call me Hizra. Doctor call me DSD patient. Uh, DSD mean is a disorder of sex development. Our government uh, told me. Uh, 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 our government told me is a uh, Hizra. Sex is a very problematic issue because in our country perspective, in our uh, there is a no um, in our country perspective there is a no uh, basic uh, knowledge about gender, sex, and sexuality. So who make the um, our uh, our stakeholder position, our government? our uh, teaching profession, our, our doctor, they don't know about our issue and they're making our rule, they're making our constitution. That's why we face a lot of problems. So you know that when I was under 18, my family forced 
prematurely cut my uterus and ovary without my concern. And they give me a forcefully testosterone hormone therapy long time to fix the mailbox. Bangladesh is a very patriotic society. And at the same time, Bangladesh is a very fundamental country. So I want to say that um, intersex uh, people in Bangladesh is the very marginal people among the marginal LGBTIQ people in the Bangladesh. So it is, uh, I wanna, I'm, I'm really sorry. And I, I cannot say like a Philippine, I cannot say um, India, I cannot say uh, Nepal or uh, 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 we, ha we have no achievement. Still now our people fighting for food, still now our people uh, fighting for the excess education is still now our fighting because you know that when uh, they are because you know that there is only two box in our our education system that is the male or female and you know that I just share my one experience when I go to the school I extremely face the um, bullying you know that my friends always told me Hey, can you please measurement with the sex organ? With uh, can you please measurement uh, uh, our sex organ and your sex organ? So yes, we face a lot of extremely uh, extremely uh, bullying in our school. That's why we cannot uh, we cannot um, achieve the good job. We cannot achieve. Uh, so still now we are fighting for the food, and a lot of people are so marginal in our country. The problem is that. Uh, the, uh, the most concerning issue right now in our country, that is the most concerning issue right now, you know that uh, when uh, our parents did our surgery, that's why uh, that time that is not a legal issue. Uh, uh, right now, uh, our, um, our is a, one of the most prestigious uh, medical university. This is the uh, only and one medical university in our uh, country. The name medical university is the BSMMU, Bangabundu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman Medical University. This medical university opened a DSD department. So the full meaning is the disorder of sex development department. So they can openly and legally uh, divorce the sex who, are, who is the under the 18, who is the most of the uh, children, uh, most of the parents, uh, uh, came here and uh, try to fix that. Uh, try to fix their children's sex organ without their concern. You know that in our uh, country perspective, we have no opinion under uh, under under the 18. Our parents' opinion is uh, our opinion. It's a very concerning issue. You know that, that this is my body. So, oh, actually, um, this is my body. Can you please give me uh, the decision? What I want, what I choose, this is the very concerning issue. Lot of time, I, I will I will try to speak out. So you know that we have a language barrier. We cannot speak a lot of time, but you know that is a very very. Uh, we face a very uh, discrimination right now. We try to we try to reach out our uh, UN organization. You know that. Uh, already uh, UN, uh, UN fact sheet uh, published, and there is very specific and clear that you, uh, uh, intersex surgery is very illegal. But nobody talk about this, the issue. A Lot of people know that about the issue in our country. I try to reach out the organization. I try, uh, already I talk the uh, UN organization in our country, they never talk about this issue. So according to my point of view, please, Log the please, please log the log log this the organization. Need not this the UN organization in our country. Who who organization did not protect our right? We not not. You know that right now I am talking with you. I am very privileged because I have a I have a education access. I have a support with uh, um, intersex Asia who support us. I am very privileged. But you know that, so my life is going so hard. When I was child, I'm going through the surgery. 
they give me a forcefully testosterone hormone therapy without my concern and right now it is legally in our country and our doctor and our government shows that it is very big achievement in our country and i'm so surprised no organization no human right organization did not talk about this issue i don't know why it is the very discrimination issue in our in, in, in the, so we can say that bangladeshi intersex people is the most marginal people most discriminationful people in the world nobody no organization no human right organization did not help you we will try to reach out a lot of time their organization so in intersex asia a lot of try to help me the information and information intersex asia did not force our government but there are lots of human right organization un organization they never talk about this issue this is my body which should actually they you know that when i talking when i talking um about our issue they shows the end oh i'm so sorry so ma'am we not need not sorry right now we need a food for our people we need a we need a safety and safe space for our people we need a better treatment for our people we need not sorry which who i were feel the pain no people did not understand they show the sympathy they did not understand empathy so this is my own supplication that for you and your organization and i strongly protect that at any cost stop this the violence violence among at any cost stop this the dsd department in our country at any cost otherwise lot of shia lot of intersex people they will be finished their life will be finished thank you so much shihab for well sharing this information and sharing this call let me put myself and gates intersex program at your disposal and let's collaborate towards your well your goal um well to proceed i i had a very similar question um to sofia anton antonellini um sofia sent us a a question around the gender critical movements and anti trans groups uh and how they target intersex uh intersex people and groups regionally and globally and sofia also asks asks us about the possibilities for a global alliance uh between intersex people and groups and also trans lgbt uh and well the possibilities to create a coalition a broad alliance to fight uh, anti lgbti movements so i would like to ask all the panelists for well try to keep your answer mm, within two minutes please uh so we, we can hear uh everyone uh be, well can we begin with you hiker could you please uh address this question first Okay. Uh, yeah, I think in in my opinion, um, we are all human being, and uh, yeah, we know that uh, there are many intersectional issues between trans uh, issue and even LGBT issue and intersex. Uh, we definitely can work together because as a human rights defender, we don't only. Uh, defend for intersex human rights only we also need to you know value uh every everybody else uh, intersex uh, everybody else uh, human rights as at the same time uh this is my uh i uh, my principle so and i see that there are in some area or in some country there there actually there are some conflict between uh, uh especially like uh policy or law uh, in terms of possible law, there are some conflicts, you know, uh, make, you know, uh, intersex and the trans kind of not, you know, uh, 
kind of have conflict in the, in, in the policy. And this is something that we don't, we have to deal with it, address it together. We cannot uh, put an, in, you know, trans or intersex uh, in a situation that we need to uh, uh, fight with, uh, with each other or against each other. I don't think this is a good strategy. I know there are trans people who bec they cannot get uh, uh, the surgery rights that the bodily autonomy, autonomy rights uh, to get surgery. Uh, but due to a uh, long, you know, uh, restriction to, you know, all the examination that they need. So they try to, be, you know, use, you know, the path of, you know, self claim they are interesting. And this is not a good approach. And we shouldn't put in, uh, trans people in that kind of situation. So we, intersex people, we also need uh, to help and support in trans, transgender people and their rights to not to force them, you know, to do in, in this way. I think the country is the same. So uh, I believe, you know, solidarity uh, is the solution. Uh, LGBT, I, some people, people say, oh, we don't want to associate with LGBT. But I want to say that why we, why we use I, why we, you know, uh, uh, made the I independent as an acronym is that we want people to know our specific issue and we want to know that we exist, right? Uh, we are different from LGBT. Uh, that is that is why we have the acronym independently. So it doesn't mean that it's, uh, yeah, I certainly think we are associated in, 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 in in some way, because we are all human beings, yeah, and uh, not associated, I don't think it's a, a good good idea. Um, and in my opinion, only solidarity, cooperation, and help each other, you know, because sometimes, yeah, probably uh, trans, trans rights, with the, they will feel, okay, um, they they might feel, uh, or if, uh, if uh, in six rights go uh, further, then it will, it will impact trans rights. We shouldn't let this happen. We we shouldn't uh, help uh, you know this and any group move. If they can move, we help them move together. Yeah, and it, we shouldn't like uh, 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 think okay, we should move faster and they you know we don't compete. I don't think competition is a good idea. We should or uh, solidar solidarity, solidify uh, and the cooperation and support each other. Human rights, you know, are for all, not only for any uh, individual groups. Thank you, thank you so much, Hiker Ishan. Would you have the same thoughts as Hiker? You mentioned also the some resistance on the intersex community to be a, a part of the LGBT, well, broader community. But how do you feel about the solidarity, the possibilities to, well, build a coalition and to expand uh, our, our alliances? Could you please share some thoughts? Uh, yeah, definitely, because uh, some intersex individuals, they don't want to associate with LGBT, with Tom LGBT, right? We also respect their uh, identity, but also sometimes we all are facing the social, uh, like, norms of value, uh, like, to harm the identity who, uh, like, are not fit with the, uh, the, the idea of the uh, binary gender rights. So that's why it's very important to have the solidarity to uh, have a strong uh, movement. Same time, we also need to understand the capacity of the uh, like uh, intersectional identity in the leading position and the decision making, right? When we have the alliances, because sometimes we have alliances, we use uh, some population as a tokenistic. It is not good practice because we always uh, like uh, hidden their issues. So we also need to understand the intersectional 
personal identity in the leading, like I mean, in the decision making. And for the anti-trans movement, uh, yeah, anti-trans idea definitely harm the intersex population because intersex population and the trans population are forcing to fit in the uh, like uh, uh, binary. Uh, binary uh, gender uh, so we also uh, need to uh, fight together to uh, like uh, to overcome this uh, like idea thank you Ishan. jeff uh, i would i would ask you the same but i would like to include um in my question some thoughts i have around conservatism and out, uh, author, authority, authoritarianism and COVID-19, the democratization. Well, in the global South, we have faced uh, several, several challenges and our previous conferences uh, have highlighted also these elements in our, well, in our fight, in our issue. I was wondering if you have a similar experience, how would you describe these, these challenges, these recent challenges, including the COVID-19 and well, Please, Jeff, go ahead. I am. Yeah, yeah. thank you, thank you, thank you, Bida. I just want to answer the LGBT person because uh, I, uh, I'm an intersex man, and when they ask me, uh, are you a member of the community? I always ask. I, I I always I'm an ally of the community, LGBT community. But let's let's not forget that we should respect and never forget that there are intersex who are part of the community, and we should respect that. Yeah, no matter what, we should respect that. Uh, the thing is that uh, it is very important to have allyship and collaboration because uh, I noticed that uh, there are many intersex who are hiding in the gay community, in the lesbian community. And this collaboration may be uh, a form of uh, the realization to those people that who don't know that they are intersex. So I, I agree with this collaboration. But with regards to the Philippine context, it's very hard. The anti-discrimination bill in the Philippines has has been uh, debated for the, for the past 23 years. So that's why the intersex community are planning to have to strategize uh, with the legal gender cognition. Yeah. And with regards to COVID-19, uh, we, we, uh, we face so many challenges, especially in having, because there's no, there's no employment, all, all shops are closed. So the, those who are employed has to stay home or, or or their salary has been cut down, so it's very hard for them. Uh, it's good that Intersex Asia and some of the funders release an urgent support because we never received any support from our government. So, yeah, we face discrimination, we, we face difficulty, and yet COVID-19 has, has did, uh, uh, did, uh, uh, did a lot to us, uh, make us more depressed. So we in the community have an uh, intersex Philippines have a weekly meet uh, online meetup to check the mental uh, the mental health of the of our members. So just for now, Vida, thank you. Thank you so much, Jeff Duha. I am well. I'd like to know from you to hear from you if you have any experience while building coalitions to counter anti-LGBT groups and, pre, well, gender critical movements. Would you have any experience uh, in that? I think uh, fundamentally when we think about building alliances, we cannot forget that there's just so much background work that goes into, you know, projecting out the alliance. A lot of messy solidarity allyship work that goes behind the curtains that we most often sort of forget to, you know, discover or uh, look at. I've not have particularly uh, a lot of experience in building uh, allyship or collaboration such of this thing, but my thoughts on this is that um, having a strong allyship between the trans and intersex movement globally will require a lot of mutual understanding, respect and collaboration. And that can only, you know, come up when you educate people or educate the masses. But uh, it can come mostly through, through, uh, uh, through two methods. One is that focusing on working on shared goals. So that is something that we are doing with Queer Campus Bangalore. 
which I co-facilitate and co-coordinate is that Queer Campus Bangalore tries to bring in different uh, people from different uh, walks of life, that is uh, in different ages, uh, work, uh, sorry, work ethics, fields, or uh, income-based groups, and tries to build a collaboration within the LGBTQIA plus movements. And we try to look at the student population making an impact with various uh, alliances that they can build within their families, academic institutions, the, you know, the services that they access. So something that we have been looking at uh, is to, you know, work on shared goals that, uh, and, and especially when we talk about trans and intersex movement, we need to see that a lot of our goals, uh, you know, revolve around uh, discrimination, stigma, lack of recognition of uh, diverse gender identities that are out there. But by focusing our energy on shared goals and working together on these common objectives and advocating for the rights of individuals who want to self-identify and express their gender in whichever way is possible uh, and whatever is authentic and meaningful for them and it makes sense in their minds, it should be you know, uh, possible and recognized. And I think that uh, builds a beautiful bridge of alliance-ship uh, of alliance-ship that we require within uh, the both of both the communities. Another way that I uh, feel that we can do this is by addressing the intersecting operations that we have within the both communities. That we both face uh, discrimination, as I said, stigma and other related uh, invisible marginalization, as uh, uh, that was uh, spoken about. But uh, it is important that we acknowledge these. Uh, you know, intersections of operations, we work on them. At the same time, we highlight them at other organizations and movements that we are working with so that they are, you know, uh, you know, highlighted in these movements. Okay, so this is what Bangladesh is facing. Okay, this is what India is facing. You know, it is critical for these movements to thrive, uh, knowing that there is a respect, mutual understanding within these movements and shared resources, but perhaps, you know, lead the way. That's all I wanted to do. Thank you. Thank you do have a super insightful answer. Shihab, you were calling on global organizations towards cooperating with Bangladesh and intersex activists in Bangladesh. I am wondering how you envision this collaboration uh, could uh, could be. How how can global organizations better assist and support Bangladesh intersex activists while towards creating these well, this alliance and countering the the actors um, that have been threatening us, uh, well, consistently over the time. And well, please, Shahab, go ahead. Uh, still now, uh, intersex issue at the same way, LGBTIQ issue, illegal issue in our country. There is a section 377 law in our country. So when we try to do collaboration and when we try to do fund collection internationally, so we face a lot of problem. Sometimes we cannot write, we have no cap, we have not too much capacity to write 30, 40 pages writing capacity and sometimes uh, we have a language barrier and at the same way um, there is the uh, international organization there they are have a lot of restriction restriction they did not um, they did not collaboration with uh, they did not uh, collaboration with any uh, 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 with any legal organization you know that uh, Intersex organization is a very illegal organization in our country. So if I do, uh, if I do the collaboration in the inter, inter, uh, internationally, so we have to do collaboration with the legal organization in our country. So they do a lot of audit, audit with us and they cut a lot of money. We cannot achieve our goal. And another thing, uh, you have a lot of recruitment and we can, we have no capability, right? 13, 14 pays, uh, pays, uh, pays your um, uh, proposal letter. So sometimes uh, who organization write your 13 page, uh, 13, 14 page uh, paper, 
uh, sometimes uh, your organization and donor organization gave the uh, gave the fund this organization. But problem is that they are written very um, are written very um, very finely, but they did not work our community. They did not uh, so we cannot improve our community. So um, and sometimes you know that in our uh, foreign organization they have their own perspective. They want to promote their own perspective. But problem is that Bangladesh is a very geographical perspective is so much different from the Western perspective, from the Indian perspective, from the Philippine perspective, from the Taiwan perspective is so much different. They are geographical, political and social view is so much different. So. Can you please help me? What I want, what uh, what we want our people, I think it will be very helpful for our people. And it's a very uh, a very important thing. Is another thing you know that we have a lot of uh, we have a lot of lackings in our community. People sometimes they they have a lot of qualification, but they did not understand the language of English. But they have a lot of opportunity. They have they, they have a lot of qualification, but some people just their language barrier because they did not speak in uh, they did not speak in English. So, so uh, because a lot of people just say, oh you don't speak in English you don't know nothing. So that's a, that's a very important thing. You know that we want very own our language paper. You know that so you know that uh, so uh, every year we saw that this research paper this 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 paper this 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 paper but you know that our community people our people they did not know they did not know about anything from this the paper because it's a very difficult we want very own language for ex for example um, we want our bengali language paper it's a very helpful for our community pe people it's very helpful for our own generation, for our mass population, for build up our awareness. Is another thing you know that, please do the collaboration with the United Organization, who is legally working in our government. There are uh, every year hundred billion billion dollar come in our in our country. So who are who are working for the SDG, gender equality, but. What are they doing? Just ask me. Just ask me what are they doing? And they are doing just cut my body every when I just in front of the mirror, I just ask touching the body. So actually, it's a very vulnerable situation we are facing right now because our government stakeholder position, they have no idea about intersex issue. They're making a lot of rule about our this. And also you mentioned that the previous question is a Hizra issue. You know, that is the funny thing is that our, we have a no is a Bengali word is a lingo. We have only is a lingo means we have a no specific word gender and sex. We have only is a, is a, is a one word. What is that mean is lingo. And we have a also very, um, uh, limitation of our uh, uh, own language. So we have to do a lot of things uh, for our own language also, because we have no specific word about, about sex and gender. We, we, can, we, can, uh, we can understand sex and gender is the same meaning of lingo, is the Bengali meaning of lingo. But did it, that is not clear. The Bengali meaning of lingo, that is meaning of the sex or gender. The problem is that you know that, you know that if you ask our government, if you ask our uh, people, they said, oh, there is no problem here. You know that because they did not know nothing. And about there is another problem is there is hierarchy, hierarchy, um, they uh, they did not consider ourselves as a human being, and they did not consider ourselves as a 
uh, same level of people. That's why they did not consider ourselves. So this is my annual supplication that we are the most marginal people of the world. So please do something for our intersex people in the Bangladesh who are facing the most vulnerable situation right now. You know that there are lots of human rights organization in our, still now in Bangladesh and they open a DSD department in our country. Every day, lots of parents bring their children and try to fix their, bring their intersex children, try to fix their children uh, normative male or female box. And you know that I already mentioned that Bangladesh is a very patriotic country. And most of the time they try to fix their children as a male. Look at me, last 23 years, I, I born and brought up as a male. You know that, see my name, it's a very common name. It's a very male name in, in our country. I face a lot of sexual harassment. So you know that this is my body. Give me the decision, you know that it's a good. If they say that is, that is the disorder of sex development, if they say that that is the diversity of sex development, I have no problem. But problem is that they open the disorder of the sex development. Yes, it's a, this is the good, uh, good opportunity. If they're after 18, I wanna make how to look myself, they work for me, that is the good opportunity. This is the, this is the most violence, this is the most human right violence with us. Can you please do something for our intersex people of Bangladesh, please? Thank you. Thank you, Shihab, so much. Thank you so much for your honesty. And um, I am looking forward to collaborating with you and other intersex um, human rights advocates in Bangladesh. Also, well, we are some minutes over time, so we need to wrap up. And I would like to ask each one of you, beginning with you, Shihab, if you could please complete the sentence we the intersex people from the global south are and we the intersex people from the global south demand, want. Could you please complete the, the sentences for me, Shihab? And while well, you can also uh, take this opportunity to say goodbye to, uh, to the people joining us today, and we will wrap up. Uh, actually, is that another thing you know that I wanna say? Please go ahead. Yes, it's another thing you know that the, um, uh, worldwide, there are lots of working transgender issue. There are lots of work, working other gender type issue, but according, according to my point of view, we need to do more collaboration. We need to do more work for the intersex issue. So you know that if I, I uh, from my activism perspective, I, I went a lot of organizations. Sometimes there are lots of activists. So there are lots of who are working in this the issue, who are working the human rights organization. This person did not know about the intersex issue, but who is working for the intersex issue? So who is making for the intersex issue, right? Who is the, who is the making for the intersex path that is not a good path, that is not a, a peaceful uh, intersex path for our community? So yeah, we need to do a lot of things. So you know that if we, if we wanna do anything, if you wanna do, uh, even if you wanna do, so first of all, example, um, if we wanna, if you wanna do research anything, first of all, we have to know who is this the person, but they did not know. They are still now walking. So yeah, it's a very problematic. And sometimes we need to notice that they did not give you access us. Sometimes they think, sometimes they think, uh, think that, hey, they are South Asian people. 
because uh, they have a language barrier. But I think so South Asian people life, life skill is a more, uh, have to be a more perspective. It's a very different perspective from the Western country. But Western country people think that, oh, uh, this is the very same issue if we apply this thing and this thing. So no, this is the very different thing, different perspective. So you know that uh, according to my point, my life perspective, my organization perspective, when you do collaboration, a lot of people collaboration with the Indian people. I respect Indian people, but you know that Indian, um, Indian perspective and Bangladesh perspective is so much different. Our culture, our language, our religion, our social perspective is so much different. So yeah, so I think that um, if we do uh, change anything, if we do uh, work anything, so yeah, we need to more access. And sometimes I think that we are so much marginal. We need to, uh, we have to do work about this, this issue because um, a lot of people did not know who are working this intersect issue worldwide, but they did not know about the intersect issue. Some people think that, oh, uh, so you know that is a for example, uh, some people think that intersex is, <laughs> is a sex characteristic. Uh, they think that, oh, so all of sex is the same sex. They did not know intersex is the lot of sex characteristics. It's a 40 of sex characteristics. So yeah, they, they and sometimes they give the input, they did the research. So it's a very problematic. We need a more, um, we need a uh, more access. I think uh, um, we need a, uh, actually we need a more opportunity to work internationally to our worldwide people. What is the intersex people? What happened with intersex people worldwide? Thank you. Yes, you have, thank you. We will definitely follow up on this conversation. I will give you some seconds to take a brief and go to Hiker Shiu. Hiker, could you please complete these two sentences and give a goodbye to people joining us today? So, Hiker, please okay, go Okay, thank you so much. Yes, we, the intersect people, uh, we as uh, people who need love and need to be loved. Don't forget about, about that. <laughs> and. Uh, we, the innocent people of Gorosal, demand the same human rights as everybody else. Uh, please uh, do support us. Thank you so much. Thank you, Hiker. Isham, please, the floor is yours. Uh, yeah, we, I would like to say we intersex people are very beautiful. And in the global south, we intersex people are most marginalized with the marginalized populations and we don't have the resources, we are not capacity than the other populations. So we demand um, like uh, to, uh, to provide the resources to intersex movement, to capacitate the intersex population and raise their issues by themselves. And yeah, I, I also like take the point from the hikers you uh, we demand our uh, like we, we demand the human rights same as the other people have. So thank you. Thank you, Isha. Jeff, could you please complete <laughs> these two sentences for us? Yeah, we intersex people from the, from the global south are beautiful just the way we are. So for our friends, be proud and loud because if we just hide, we hide, then our stories won't be heard. And it is in being heard that we are seen. And only when we are seen, we will be able to demand all the things that we, all the things and changes we deserve. And uh, we, the intersex people from the global south, demand you to respect our life, uh, our rights like everyone else. Thank you. Yes, we are the, we are the beautiful person in the planet. Most beautiful person in the planet. And as an intersex person from the Global South, Shihab, what would you demand? Um, actually, um, first of all, um, 
thank you so much actually i'm going to say a lot of thing but the time is short because our experience our barrier is actually we need a more space for sharing our 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 talk so yeah if we yeah and just i want to share that um this is very vulnerable situation we are facing now and most of the time and you know that when uh, the intersex baby is the born discrimination does towards in our country <laughs> nobody protect our our, our our there there is a lot of problem there you know that already mentioned that all of people think that uh, intersex people are the hijra people but uh, no uh, no intersex people are hijra people so hijra people are biological male and intersex people born with the different sex characteristics so our government give me a gazette the gazette name is the uh, hijra gazette this gazette this is very complicated you know that is the another is the human violation is that if i want to take any opportunity our government officially i want to i want to put up my pan and was the doctor how look my genital organ and doctor give me the certificate and show to the government then then doctor then uh, then uh, then government give me the opportunity this is the most most disrespectful for as a human being because this is not a, you know that we are a human being we are not an animal so so if i want so you know that by born why i need to why i need to want give me my body right Thank i you. Oh, i hard. give my body right is my own way why i want my body right why i want want my body right to government it's 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 very 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 discrimination doctor just put the pan and show that and even though doctor did not have no idea about intersex condition in our country perspective please check doctor did not have no idea doctor did not read any about the about uh, read about the intersex books no nothing so they shows that genital and they I'm sorry that. to interrupt you let's I'm see sorry, what I'm sorry 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 so oh, thank no you problem. so much thank you so much let's see what duha uh, has to say about it duha we the intersex people from the global south are and demand not invisible we are here we are not going anywhere we have always existed and will continue to exist uh we demand uh, visibility we demand that you advocate more about us we demand that you talk about us and we demand empowerment yeah thank you so much thank you duha thank you all of the panelists joining here today let me just share that each panelist produced a an article that will integrate that will um that will compose a full publication a memoir uh, that we hope can can work towards well well keep doing the social change and the the intersex revolution we urgently need. So I invite you to follow us and join us on social media. Uh, we will make uh, available this publication. Uh, in our social media, in our website. So please, well, join our conversations on Instagram. Well, you, here you have all our our accounts. Please uh, check out what we have. Well, what we have been doing around intersex human rights. Um, there you can also find the Latin American and the Caribbean and the African conferences. Um, these are previous conferences we held. And 
you can also enjoy the reading of the respective memoirs of each conference. So please go ahead and join us in this conversation. Uh, furthermore, I would like to draw your attention to the fact that intersex groups operate with a serious lack of funding and it's one of our priorities to transform this reality. So if you are interested in collaborating with and supporting the work of the Intersex Program and of GATE, we deeply appreciate your donation. It will help us a lot in continuing our work in favor of the protection and promotion of the human rights of intersex people worldwide. So to all of you who have participated in this, uh, in this conversation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for joining us on this occasion. And I hope to meet you again very, very soon. I live, uh, well, I, with much gratitude, I say goodbye to all of you. Good luck, everyone. Have a great time.